The First Continental Congress commenced at the Carpenters Hall in Philadelphia on the 5th of September 1774. In all, 56 delegates attended the Congress from 12 different colonies. The colony who did not attend was Georgia, mainly because at that time they were dealing with a conflict involving Native Americans and as such were not able to attend. Further to this, at the time of the First Continental Congress, the majority of Georgians still supported the British government. However, events which took place in late 1774 eventually saw more Georgians join the anti-British protests. This very decision by the Continental Congress to meet, however, as a gathering of colonists, is seen by historian Edmund Morgan as a challenge to British Parliament and congressional measures, however hesitant, were outright treason. It was during this gathering that the delegates, each of whom had one vote, developed a set of declarations through which they denounced the Intolerable Acts, the Quebec Act, the extension of Admiralty Courts, the dissolution of colonial assemblies, as well as the stationing of regular troops in colonial towns during peacetime. The Congress declared in all 13 parliamentary acts since 1763 as unconstitutional. In doing so, they also pledged to support economic sanctions until these acts were repealed. Quite early in the proceedings, Charles Thompson, who was Secretary to the Continental Congress in Philadelphia, entered into the minutes this resolution on September 22, 1774, that the Congress request the merchants and others in the colonials not to send to Great Britain any, or any goods and to direct the execution of all orders already sent to be delayed or suspended until the sense of Congress on the means to be taken for the preservation of the liberties of America is made public. On the 14th of October 1774, the Congress adopted a set of declarations and resolves. The delegates adopted the detailed articles of Non-Importation Association on the, 20th, on the 22nd of October 1774. Rather. In addition to this, two days earlier, on the 20th of October, the delegates signed the Continental Association, which called for a complete ban on all trade between America and Great Britain of all goods and wares or merchandise. So by the end of the First Continental Congress, a statement of American complaints was developed. This communication was addressed to King George III, and it is crucial to remember that at this stage, many of the delegates in fact remained loyal to the King, but pointedly and deliberately not loyal to Parliament. In this document, the Congress delegates asserted that the colonists had certain rights which included life, liberty and property, that they had never ceded these to any sovereign power, whatever a right to dispose or either without their consent. With this established, the congressmen agreed to reconvene on the 10th of May 1775 if their grievances were not heard, and as such they officially adjourned the First Continental Congress on the 26th of October 1774. The outcomes of the First Continental Congress were not made public at the time. After all, it was treasonous for them to meet. As historical perspective of Mercy Otis Warren testifies in her history when she wrote, all America waited in anxious hope and expectation for the decisions of a Continental Congress. To close then, according to historian Pauline Mayer, what the First Continental Congress showed was that the movement against Britain was largely decentralised. Anything resembling central direction emerged only rarely before the First Continental Congress of 1774.